Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Today we're going to do a full step-by-step -step guide on how to replace the oil pump drive on this 2005 Audi A4 Estate B7. Just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed, you can just click the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. The oil pump drives are real common on these Audis. We've done two or three in the past now. Uh, they've just got some old drives. You can just see, this is the section that runs in the pump. You see that's completely rounded off there. And the model that this was in was flashing, flagging up uh, an oil pressure warning. And this section of it runs in the balance shaft. You can see it's just starting to take the edge there. And this is another model, half another model. It was replaced before the oil pressure light started coming up. And you can see it's warm, but not quite to the point where it's fully rounded. It's just starting to go there. So we're going to do this one today. Um, there's no faults with it at the minute, uh, but he's just bought the car and he's just going to do it so he knows he's not going to have the issue with it. Now if you want to check the description below, there's links to all the parts used and all the tools throughout the video, so you can check that at any point. Um, but we'll get it on the ramp and uh, show you what we've got to do. Just before we get it on the ramp, we'll show you the two, there's two types of drive as well. The earlier, there's a modified oil pump. The later modified oil pumps have a longer drive. That's 100 mil, and non-modified ones have a 70, I think it's 73 or 75 mil drive. Uh, so we've got both, just so we're covered. Right, we're using the two-poster ramp today, which is going to make the job a lot easier. Um, you could do it on the on the floor, but it'd be a little bit tricky. You just have to get it, I'd get it jacked up as high as I can on some axle stands, because um, we're going to need to support the engine. We're going to need to undo both engine mounts and support the engine from the top and the subframe needs to be dropped down as well. So, First job we're going to do is take the engine cover off and then we're going to support the engine at the top. Just going to use a seat belt, and strap it around the inlet manifold onto the hook there on the grip. That will support the weight of the engine while we drop the engine mounts off. Right, let's get it up in the air, see what we've got to do from underneath. Uh, normally we've got an engine under tray on here to take off, but it's missing on this one, so a two-part under tray normally. Uh, but they're normally held on with some half-turn clips that you'd have to get out first. But basically what we're going to need to do is we've got the engine sump here, and we need to get the sump off to access the balance shaft and the oil pump to get the drive out. So you can see this is the sump frame across the middle there. All that's in the way of getting the sump down. So. We've got to drop that down and there's a few other bits to get out of the way as well. Now this model's got air conditioning and um, we've got an air con pipe just running across the bottom of the sump there. So we're going to need to degas the air con quick just so we can get that pipe out of the way. And so we've pumped up the air con machine a bit there and we'll get the gas sucked out. And after we've done that, we're just going to drop the oil out. We've got the sump plug there. We've got a 90 mil socket to take that out and drop the engine on. Now that we've dropped the engine on, we're going to put the sump plug back in and it wants to be 30 newton meters. The aircon's still gassing down at the minute. As soon as it's degassed, we're just going to take that aircon pipe off and out of the way. And then we've got some 13 mil nuts on the engine mount, just there, one each side. So we've got one on that side mount and one on that side mount, just there. And we're going to undo them two bolts and the front engine mount there as well. And then we're just going to take up the slack with the crane up the top, just to make sure the engine is hanging and not putting weight on the subframe before we start to drop the subframe. Okay. 
Yeah. And the engine mounts are loose now and we're just winding up the uh, thread on the engine crane at the front to see if it uh, starts releasing it. Start pulling the uh, engine off the mounts. Yeah. yeah, it's coming, yeah. And it is just starting to take the slack there so we know that when we drop the subframe it's not going to uh, drop down all of a sudden. Aircon pipe out of the way. I'm going to take these, drop these mounts down, and trap the subframe into place at the front. Uh, there's two 18 mils in there, and then another one at the back, just there. And we've got the same again to do that side. And then we've got the back subframe mounts there. We're just going to undo the 18 mil again on both sides, and then we should be able to slide the subframe out, ready to lower it down. Take up the load just in case it does drop it off. It's a bit of a precaution, then. loose at the front now but we're just going to drop the anti roll bar down as well so at the front here um, we've got two 30 mil bolts on either side so we'll drop them set them up it forward and all we really need to do is just get it forward and down enough so we can get access in there because there's two bolts for a sump there so, and that will just allow us enough room as well to drop the subframe down here and the oil pickups in the sump there and without dropping the subframe we can't get the sump down enough to get it off because of the uh, pickup in the sump there so let's see if we can just drop it down uh, forward and down a little bit Subframe's ready to be moved out of the way a bit. We're going to start on doing the sump bolts. Um, we've just got to take off the connector there as well. And the bottom sump, so we'll just take that off. Uh, and then we've got all these little 10 mil bolts, or it's an Allen key centre as well, I think, all the way around to so we'll access it. We'll get all them off and start getting it loosened. And then tackle the two Walker bonds at the back. We'll show you that in a bit more detail uh, when we've got all the others out. I'll just show you quick as well, as well as the um, 10 mil sump bolts. We've got four along the, uh, the back edge of the sump here, which go through to the gearbox. And then two vertical bolts, go up there, one there, and another one just there as well. So get them out at the same time.
Right, we've got all the sump bolts out now, along the side there. Uh, along the back and the bigger ones as well. Now, there's two left that are really awkward to get at. Just through these two holes here, up against the gearbox there, there's two, two bolts that are quite deep into the sump and they're actually offset as well at a slight angle. So we're going to use a, a long reach, a wobble ended snap on Allen key bolt. It's really important with these to make sure you get a good bite first time and crack them off because if you round them off um, they're going to be mega tricky to get out so uh, but this it's a decent snap on bit it usually does the job and get a good bite first time so let's have a go and see if we can get them out yeah. First one bit and cracked off quite nicely. Hopefully the second one does the same. Yeah, so wobble ended five mil Allen socket. Uh, if you check the description below, I'll put a link to um, where you can get one from. I'll also put links to the um, oil pump driver as well and the part numbers, they're only about 4 or 5 quid each yeah. Both of them cracked off quite nicely there so now we can just uh, wind them out the end of the Allen bit Right, that's both the uh, awkward bolts out now. Uh, so luckily they came out. If they didn't come out, pretty much the only way to get them off uh, would have been to take the gearbox off. So now that they're out, we'll um, prise the sump away. It's just, uh, it ain't got a gasket on it, it's sealed on, so it does just take a little bit of prying just to pop it off from the uh, bottom of the engine block. We'll drop that down now and uh, see if we can get it off. Drop the uh, sump off. Uh, this is the got the balance shaft here, and the oil pump is just there. Just try and show you, try and have the torch at the same time. Uh, yeah, there's the, so the oil pumps just there, and the drive runs through the end of that uh, all there and into the balance shaft on the other side. And to get the shaft out, if you can see in the Hold there, we've got a little uh, internal seat clip just there. We're just going to pop that clip out and see if we can get the drive out. See what, see how it looks. Pop the new in. Just going to use a really tiny ball, a, a, a really tiny pair of uh, screw clip pliers. Out there. It's a bit of fiddly, it was a really small one, so I've got to be careful not to, uh, not to lose it. Okay, let's pop that out there, you can see, put the small seat into it, make sure you don't lose that. Hopefully draw the rod out, or the magnet now, you can get directly into the, and uh, let's get the drive out. There's the drive. Looks like this one's actually had the uh, 
modified pump fade at some point because uh, that's the longer shaft. And let's get the uh, get the new one and have a quick compare. Right, so we've got the new drive now, and it, it definitely has had the modified oil pump because it's got the uh, 100 mil rod in it. So, so these are the two new ones. That's the 73, so 73, 75, and this is the 100. Um, it doesn't actually look too bad, but you can see a bit hard to see on the camera. But it is just starting to wear the edges a little bit on the. Let's see, it's probably a bit clearer. You know, probably would have gone quite a bit more to be fair, but you can see. Doing the water piece of mine, so uh, he's going to get the new one fitted. He knows he can burn it as for free, then, so we'll pop the new uh, rod in and put the C clip back in after it. Start building everything back up. Simply just slide the new rod straight into place. So these modified ones are about an inch longer um, just to get a better drive on the pump, so uh, stop some wear and stuff. And pop the C clip in now. If you're going to order a new drive, it's probably worth just ordering a C clip at the same time just in case you don't want to be stuck halfway through the job and, and lose the clip. But I just heard it click into place, so just make sure it's definitely aimed. Uh, that's all gone back in nicely and everything's gone fairly well to plan so far so all we're going to do now is just clean up the surface of the block there and clean up the surface on the sump as well and we'll get some fresh sealer on it and get the sump back into place. Just got a razor blade we're just going to scrape the excess of the sealer off and then we've got this uh, nifty little tool just to clean it up the yellow pad on it which is for Ali it's nice and soft it just takes all the sealer off but doesn't uh, Marking, don't go out the alley or anything. So. That surface nice is nice and clean now on the sump. What we're going to do next is just clean out the uh, old sump pan with some brake cleaner, make sure there's no sealer left in there, uh, clean up the, the engine block, and we'll get, get it to back on. Right, sump's nice and clean now, dried it all out. We'll just put a bead of sealer all the way around. Now that we've got the sealer on, we'll mount it to get ready and mount it back up into place. I'll just try and show you. Try to show you them awkward bolts uh, while the sun's off. You just see these two, two at the end there as the sun gets up. But yeah, they're just on a slight angle, so it just makes them a bit awkward. Like I say, they just uh, they didn't come out too bad, so that's bonus. Let's get the sun back on. All right, we're just going to pry the sun frame down now, uh, just so we can get the slot the sun pin. And then we'll just put a couple of bolts in, just like they just hold it in place. Always just start the bolts by hand first, just so you know you're not cross threading them. I just run all the bolts in quite loosely um, and once we've got them all in we'll run around them all and talk them properly.
Now that we've put all the 10 mils in lightly, we're going to put the big, the bigger gearbox bolts in first. It's the ones that situate at the back there. Just so it pulls it nice, nice and tight up to the gearbox. And put the two bigger vertical ones in as well. And then we'll gently run round all the 10 mils, nice and evenly, give them a, a reasonable nip. Uh, and then we'll just uh, do the two awkward ones last and then just give them a light nip at the back there. I decided to torque them up today instead, so the uh, correct setting is 15 newton meters. Uh, Some sort of back into place now. We've torqued all the little 10 mils, about the 15 newton meters, and we're about ready to put the sub frame back up now. I'm just going to put a bit of grease on some of the bolts and then we'll start getting everything back up. Pull the subframe into place and nip the back bolts up and we're just going to position the crumbs there. Just jack it up. You can just see see it very well but you just want to be lining it up with the nice and centre with the bolt on there before you put the front bolts back in. Yeah. And then we'll mount the you've got your alley bracket there that fits over the slot that over the engine mount bolt just there and you can fit it up to place and put your Three bolts back in. Yeah. Get that done now. Now that we've got all the eighteens done, uh, we've just left to uh, put the thirteen mils on the engine mounts. Uh, and then we'll put the roll bar 13s back on as well. The roll bar's on now, so we're just going to drop the engine down before we nip the 13s up that are holding the uh, bottom engine mount. So it ain't quite dropped in to drop through, but quite enough to get some cred on. So now that it's lowering it down, we should just be able to get the 13s nipped up nicely. Now. Now we're just going to put the engine mounts on the anti roll bar mounts done up now. We're just going to put the front engine mount back on. engine mount on, uh, we'll just pop the air con pipe back in and uh, we've nearly done under it, underneath. Um, after that we're going to drop it down, put some oil in it and uh, get it started back up. That's everything underneath done now. We're just going to drop the car back down. The engine's all supported from the mounts again now, so we can take the top support off. And I'm just going to fill the engine oil up now. Please take 3.8 litres of 530 fully synthetic oil. So that's the engine oil filled up as well. Um, we're actually going to change the oil and the oil filter on this one as well. Uh, just look down the back of the manifold. There's a filter cap there. Um, we'll, move, we'll put a new filter in tonight. We don't really have to, but as soon as we're doing it, we're going to change the filter at the same time. Um, but that's uh, after that, we can just gas the aircon up, uh, run it up, check for any leaks. 
and it's just job done so not too bad a job really seems a bit daunting to a few people but it's um once you've done them a few times as well it's not too bad so uh, if you need to check out any of the tools or the parts used just check the description below um, we're going to carry on with this tonight and put a cam belt and water pump on it so there'll be another video uh, if you want to check that out but uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time